everyone. I'm Dr. Padmavati Tungaturti from Teach Connect. I'm on a mission of improving quality of education at schools. Last 10 board examinations are on cards. They might start any time from February 15. That's what the news is from the CBSC department. Now every school will struggle and the teachers will own up their students and they would always want their children to pass with flying colors. Therefore, what are the top five things which we have to look at and how to analyze the sample question paper for physics? This is what I'm going to let you all know here. Follow these steps for a sure shot, top-notch marks for your student. Now, what are the top five things which a student has to look for in the question paper per se? Now, the first thing is reading the question very carefully for at least two times, be it an A-grade student or be it anybody. The student has to read the question for two times at least to understand and have a comprehension. Now, the student has to mark three important things. One, what is asked in the question? That is, what should a child do after reading the question? Is he supposed to underline, draw, or uh, do any art integration? Should he justify? Should he compare? Or things like that. This we can call it call as behavior. What the child has to exhibit for the examination in the question asked. Now, the next part of it is content. What's the content asked? What's the question framed for? And the third thing which the child has to look for is the degree of accuracy. Are they asking to spell it correctly? Or are they asking you to observe and write down clearly, mentioning the correct answer? These are the things which the child has to look for. That's the second thing. Now, the third thing, comprehend the question very clearly. Read it and reread it. And let the child check whether the child has really understood the question or to which lesson this question belongs to. Because the child has to either remember and understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, or create these questions. It's very important for a child to link up the question to the lesson which he already read it. The fourth one, let the child underline the degree of accuracy words. That is the best words to which he should write the answer. The fifth point is looking for the clues in the answer itself. That's very, very important to attempt the questions on competency-based education. These are the top five things which will add the marks of the child as a top notch. These will be the cherry on the ice cream for the student. Linking up the question to the lesson learned is a priority. Underlining the degree of accuracy is very important and Looking for the clues in the question itself is required. Now, let us look at the sample question paper wherein I will be able to analyze the physics and the chemistry part of the sample question paper for class 10. I should share my screen now. These instructions go without saying and all of us are familiar about this now looking at the questions in section a we know that there are 20 questions here now if a child has to look at this question and understand this the change in color of the moist litmus paper in the given setup is due to there are options given let the child not hurry up in looking for the answer 
and writing the answer anyhow. The first step, what is the content given here? The content and the reaction is between sodium chloride and concentrated sulfuric acid. Here, the most important thing is the child will have to understand that sulfuric acid is specifically given because it is a dehydrating agent. The specificity of the question is very, very important. Now, when it is a dehydrating agent, there is no water molecule and the litmus test will happen only if there is a moist litmus paper. That is, apart from this being an acid test, acid basic test, it's a test for H plus ions aqueous in the solution. That's how the child has to arrive at the answer. There is also a guard tube containing calcium chloride given here. That's a dehydrating agent. Moist litmus paper is very important and this is the degree of accuracy. They could have as well given litmus paper. Instead of litmus paper, any supporting adjective given over there is to be focused upon. That's very, very important. Then the child will be able to write the answer very clearly and zero in on presence of H plus ion in the solution. Now the next thing, this question comes The first question comes under analysis question because it is a moist litmus paper. The child remembers and understands it and analyzes that only moist litmus paper will turn positive for testing it. Therefore, but there is very small difference between uh, remember understand question and from understand to apply and bridge between apply and analyze is also very low. Now look at the next question. In the redox reaction, yes, the child has to link up this redox reaction to the redox reaction chapter. Now what are they asking? The reduction and the oxidation. That is the accuracy. This is a redox reaction. And in this reaction, they are asking. This is an understanding question where the child already knows the information and reading the question to understand. Moving on to the third question, the child must have written these two answers correctly now because the child has underlined the degree of accuracy. Now look at this. Which of the following is the correct observation of the reaction shown in the above setup? That means there are also observations which might not be correct. Now, what is happening here? There is a watch glass and there is tongs. There is a Bunsen burner and magnesium ribbon. This magnesium ribbon burns in the presence of oxygen. And now there is something collected over here. That means magnesium oxide is collected. Then the child will have to look at two options. Brown powder of magnesium oxide is formed and magnesium ribbon burns with a brilliant white light. Now here, clue comes into picture. Now, if the child is able to look at the brilliant white light, which comes up from the remembering and understanding part of it, this is the answer. Now, when magnesium oxide is formed, if the child is in a dilemma, whether it is in brown powder or in white powder, let them not go for those options. Only the option which are very sure of, let them understand. But anyhow, magnesium oxide is not in brown color, but it is in white color. Read the question, eliminate those wrong answers, go to the right answer and zero in on the correct answer because here it is asked correct observation. Now, going further here, this question says that with the reference to four gases which are given here. Now, this is not a remember and understand question. The child is applying the knowledge here and further down analyzing what is happening here. 
Now, when the child is having the chart like this, tell the student to first pick up one such component in this carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide or chlorine or oxygen. Look for the options in the table. Now, what will small children be sure of? The product of respiration. Therefore, carbon dioxide is there as a product of respiration over here. Looking at these answers over here, the acidic oxide is carbon dioxide and chlorine is used in the treatment of water because the child has applied the knowledge and analyzed whatever is given over here. An incomplete combustion happens with carbon monoxide. Therefore, B should be the right answer. Now, how did the child arrive at the right answer? He has taken up one such thing, like when we have a respiration process, what's the respiration happening here? It is carbon dioxide. Let them go from one stage to another, zeroing in the answer. Now, now that's a question coming up from the teacher uh, as to whether the children really have so much time. This is a question of practice. Because children, when they do such kind of questions slowly one after the other, focusing on getting the more number of correct answers rather than completing the paper in the mock examinations which we conduct, definitely the child is going to secure very good number of marks. Now coming to the next question. On placing the copper coin in a test tube containing green ferrous sulfate solution, now you all, by this time, the teachers are aware that ferrous surface solution is green in color is a degree of accuracy. And if it's a copper coin placed in a test tube, that means these two components are coming into contact with each other. And what is the reaction which is going to happen? As we all know, and the children also are supposed to be told that, that the ferrous sulfate solution uh, copper coin is put in green ferrous sulfate solution, but they now know the reactivity series. They have to bring back their knowledge of remembering and understanding the reactivity series, apply that knowledge over here. There is a contact happening because a copper coin is put in the test tube containing green ferrous sulfate solution. Obviously, the answer is visible here that it remains green because co copper cannot replace paracelphate solution. That is for sure. Now, this is obviously a remembering, understanding question and applying the knowledge of uh, green paracelphate solution not being replaced by copper, that is for the reactivity series. Now, when we go to question number six, again, it's a chemistry question given here. Anita added a drop of diluted acidic acid. Now, this is diluted acidic acid and diluted hydrochloric acid. Where did they put this? They put on a pH paper. There is no hurry to go to the answer segment. Now, and compared the color. That means, did he put one drop on the other or did, the ch did Anita put them separately? All these questions must come onto their mind over there then only the child will be able to write the answer for this. Which of the following is a correct conclusion? Look at the degree of accuracy over here. It is a correct conclusion, which is which will fetch the marks. By this time, by remembering and understanding, the child knows that it is dilute acetic acid and it is less stronger than the dilute hydrochloric acid. PH paper shows the strength of the acids. Therefore, now the child is comparing because the two drops are put at two different places. Then only the child can compare. Now, pH of acetic acid and the pH of hydrochloric acid, the child got to measure which is more stronger. The answer will not be given in this sample question paper analysis, which I'm going to make here. Because we, if we keep on giving the answers, the video will become quite a lengthy one. Now next, 
Therefore, the child for every question has to move from a remembering stage to an understanding stage to an application analysis stage, then go to evaluation and creation stage. The formulae of four organic compounds are shown below. Now choose the correct option. There are four organic compounds. Let the child look at the four organic compounds very clearly. Now, what is happening? Yes, they have these four organic compounds in their syllabus. Now, they have this. Now, there is a double bond over here. That means it is an unsaturated compound. Now comes the next one. It is an acid. Then this is a saturated compound. This is also an acetic acid which has any compound they, when there is a single bond between C and C is considered a saturated compound. And therefore now maybe they look at the double bonds as well as the single bond because these are the four organic compounds shown below and choose the correct option over here. Now next, going into the content of it, A and B are unsaturated compounds. Now, B is saturated compound. It is not an unsaturated compound. C and D are saturated hydrocarbons. These are hydrocarbon compounds. They are saturated hydrocarbon compounds. This saturated hydrocarbon compound, this is a mistake which is done by the sample papers, uh, vectors. They are people who are vetting it. Then C and D are both hydrocarbons. And now, the better answer which we are going to go is, Addition of hydrogen in the presence of catalyst to change from A to C. There is hydrogen which is happening in the presence of nickel as a catalyst and that's how the double bond breaks. The children are aware of it. Then this is a question where the children, they remember, they understand and the same thing they are reproducing here because it is clear that they can do this uh, reaction between ethene as well as hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst is changes to compound C. Now going on to the next question. This is a sample paper question. Sample question paper analysis for physics and chemistry only. If we're now looking at this, a complete circuit, look at the degree. A complete circuit is left on for several minutes. Let the child underline the words, causing the connecting copper wire to become hot. That means there is heat generated. The temperature is increasing. Let the child understand the question completely. As the temperature of the wire increases, the electrical resistance of the wire becomes hot. Whether it increases or decreases, we can allow the child to take some time because they're giving a lot of practice in the a mock examination for a child to underline those words, then reread it and see the circuit is complete. If the circuit is not complete, then there is no temperature increase in the electrical resistance. When we are talking about the electrical resistance, we are supposed to refer to Ohm's law. Ohm's law state works with a constant temperature. Now, when the temperature of the wire is increasing, obviously the answer will be here. The child has to zero in on the answer and the rest of the things the child should also mark them wrong and then only proceed to the next question. Because if there is no point just giving a right answer and not looking for the wrong answer. Even after looking at the right answer, because as the temperature of wire increases, the electrical resistance will increase. This comes up in a topic where we talk about electrical ion which we are using at home. Therefore, let them connect it. Let them go back, read the question again. It is heated for several minutes. It is very specifically mentioned that the comp that the electrical resistance, that the wire is heated for several minutes. Now, now coming to the next, coming to this question, it is we are applying the information which we have already read in the classroom. Therefore, every question, every competency-based 
question will have a direct connection with the uh, a question which which the lesson which they have learned earlier now look at the question number 14 a copper wire is held between the poles of a magnet first of all the teacher has to assure every student that nothing is going to come from out of the blue the child will have to only link up the lesson with the question which is given here now obviously we have a power magnet then we can look at the directions here what comes to our mind only north and south come to our mind east and west are never spoken about and that is a clue which is given over here east and west can never be spoken about therefore now when we are looking at it that means we are applying the knowledge and also analyzing the question does east and west a matter for us when we are talking about bar magnet looking at the magnetic field chapter and the magnetism chapter we can never have anything which is related to east and west now look at the question it is such become such an easy one when we are talking about the four directions which two directions have a force on this obviously it is two directions only the current in the wire can be reversed we all know that it is uh, when all the four directions are there, only two directions take place in this and the current can be reversed, but still it is in north-south direction only. Therefore, the child is using the information here and the child is trying to zero in, going back to the lesson. Let the child thoroughly think about what are the concepts which are being discussed here and how best they can link up with the answers given in the textbook. Now going to the next question, question number 15. Now this is a metal core, plastic insulation occurring. And this surrounds the wire, plastic insulation surrounds the wire having the diameter D length L by this time when the child sees a diameter D and a length L, the child should be working with the Ohm's law. Now let us not be in a hurry to complete this. Let the child mark these points and a decrease in the resistance of the wire. Wow, here we have the clue that we are talking about the length, the diameter and the resistance of the wire produced by an increase in the, this is the key word over here. Then if it's an increase, then what's happening? Now they will obviously write Ohm's law over here. The child now knows how to do an evaluation of this. There is an insulation coming up and the child is obviously doing an evaluation over here and decrease in the resistance of the wire. And let the child calculate because the resistance is inversely proportional to the area of cross-section. Now the child knows what to do because the child has already revised so many times. Now that means from what the child has remembered and understood, the child will slowly move on to evaluating this, apply the knowledge and analyze it and evaluate as to what is the inverse proportionality over here. Now the question number 16 over here, which of the following pattern correctly described? That is how we should analyze the sample question paper. It doesn't matter whether there are 20 objective questions or 10 objective questions. These are, we should look at 20 objective questions as only a bonus for us, but then everybody should be able to write the answer. It's not that these 20 are objective type, 20 objective types, difficulties also are lying between the uh, remember, understand, to apply, analyze, to evaluate and create. Therefore, these are correctly describes the magnetic field along uh, around a long straight wire carrying current. Now, current carrying conductor, magnetic field, the children know that it is right hand thumb rule. Now, they must have drawn many times how the right hand thumb rule works. Now, they have to only focus on the which of the following pattern. There is a following pattern over here along a straight wire. Carrying, conduct, uh, carrying current and that should be the answer as I have told you in the sample question papers. After writing the concentric circle, we should allow the child to 
cross out the wrong answers to zero in on the right answers. Now again, now silver bromide decomposition is used in black and white photography. Light provides energy for this exothermic reaction. Yes, come on, the first one is, yes, we understand that the, this is the use of, uh, because it is given that it is used in black and white photography, right? Now, light provides energy for this exothermic reaction. Now, let the child focus on this statement. The first statement is clear. There will be a catch in one of the statements. The first statement is clear. Light provides energy for this exothermic reaction. The light provides energy, then it will become an endothermic reaction. It doesn't become an exothermic reaction. That's how the child can zero in on the correct option over there, which is given. Now going to another physics question at number 20. On a freely suspending a current carrying solenoid. Wow. Freely suspending. Let the child focus on this word freely suspending. And it is a current carrying solenoid. It's having a current in this. And that's a solenoid. We all must have told the children earlier that it is a bar magnet. Leave it. Even if the child was absent for the class, it is showing that it comes to rest in geographical north-south direction. When it comes to rest in the geographical north-south direction, obviously means that the current carrying solenoid is behaving like a bar magnet. That's wonderful explanation, self-explanatory one given over here. On one end of current carrying straight solenoid, one end of the current carrying straight solenoid behaves as a north pole and the other end as a south pole, just like a bar magnet. Look here. The word bar magnet is already given. If the child is able to comprehend this question, read it twice. This is what we call as analysis. Every child has to do the question paper analysis while they are writing during the examination also. That will be beneficial for the child. When the child is writing this question, underlining that it becomes a bar magnet, then they can, the child can obviously choose the correct whether it is the correct explanation or not. Therefore, let, let us give some homework to the children also to zero in on the answers. By watching this video, the children will obviously be able to understand and move further as to how to write the uh, question. Now, when we go on to slightly very short answer question where there is not much of a clue, let us look at this. Look at this question number uh, 21. Section B, maybe the child has to write a little bit, but still, there will be very clear explanation given in this uh, question. There is nothing to panic. All competency-based questions are much more easier than normal remember and understand questions. Competency-based questions are meant to be written clearly in the statements. And then we understand that this is a clear solution of slate's line is made by dissolving calcium hydroxide in an excess of water. A clear solution, the child will automatically know how the clear solution is made in excess of water. Then it's exposed to air. The solution turns milky as a faint white precipitate form. The child can understand that there is a faint white precipitate which is formed. There is a faint white precipitate which is formed. Explain why a faint white precipitate is formed. This is also a remember and understand question. The child should be able to comprehend well here. They will be able to write this chemical equation which is a very easy one. Now here... In this question, there is one girl who added Kirti. Kirti is a girl. She added dilute hydrochloric acid to four metals and recorded her observations over here. When it is metal and an acid reacting with H there, 
hydrochloric acid is HCl. Metal reaction is always linked up to reactivity series. See, still we are not zeroing on the on, on the on the answers. We are having a we are observing what the child has written and what are her observations as shown in the table given below. These are the these are the things. What the child did added copper and hydrochloric acid. The child has to have a uh, uh, um, have all the reactivity series elements in the mind. That is, yeah, that's how the child is remembering and understanding the question. Now she has a doubt about a few things. Like copper, the, this girl Kirti has written yes over here. Iron, yes, HCl. Magnesium, no. Zinc, yes. She observed that these there are reactions over here. Select the correct observation. Copper doesn't react with hydrochloric acid. Only iron and zinc react because the replacement doesn't happen with hydrogen, doesn't replace copper. The child has observed this incorrectly. That means now the student has to write only two equations, one for iron with HCl, and one for zinc with HCl. Every time we should make an effort to bring down the apply analysis or evaluate or whatever the question into the remembering and understanding whatever we have learned. Zero down, decode it, write down, have a rough space, then we can easily do the uh, question. Here we should be very confident, this is a check for a confidence of the child that copper doesn't react with HCl. Therefore, these are the things now imagine. Iron is reacting with HCl. The child now knows that cop uh, uh, copper does not react with HCl. In this, zinc reacts with HCl. Now, going on to another question. This is question number 25 over here. In this question number 25, yes, this is so easy for a child to look at. Let the child spend some time looking at the question. What is happening here? Let the child not write the answer at all at the first place. Look at the question. Oh, that's a prism there. There is a radiation from the sun. What's happening? Let, let the question paper be a play for the child. And obviously, it's a yellow light and blue light. That means what happened to the other lights over here? It is with GR, right? Oh, okay, the light, these other lights are not given here. Our assessment is only on these two lights. Yes, but all the lights are also there over there. But they are not asked for in the question. Now then, now what's the phenomena? You only have to state the phenomena. You don't have to describe it. State the phenomena observed here. Explain with reference to the diagram. Let the child not write what is not asked for. Let the child ask only what is asked for. That is explain with reference to this. Only about these two lights. Which one has a blue light? Whether blue light has higher wavelength or yellow light has higher wavelength. That's how the child has to decode the question paper, write down, link up the wavelength with the velocity, analyze the answer, evaluate the pros and cons, and give the answer. There is no hurry. The question paper can be completed within particular time. Obviously, the child will have more time, provided the child is trained on these aspects during the mock examination. And I always wish that feedback must be given correctly to the children after the examination. Once when the question paper is written by the child, the teacher has to run through all the questions and then answers. Looking at the question here, analysis of the question is more important than the analysis of the answer written by the child. Did the child understand and comprehend the question correctly? If the child has understood and comprehended the question correctly, there is nothing like that. The child will obviously write the 
correct answer because slowly decoding he can link up the question to the concepts learned at school during the lesson time now then here two identical prism the story is different when they are unidentical prism unidentical prism there is again there are so many other things which happen when you are the same dispersion goes on now the unidentical prisms are not here we are talking only about identical prism with a narrow beam of white light this is the limitation of the syllabus which it is given to the children emerges out of the second prism obviously this is a very fantastic answer and they can how will you use the two identical prism how are you going to use the two identical prism i'll just click on this and uh, give you the answer this is question number 25 yes i'll just show you see this is how they are going to use the two prisms so by here how they are going to use is obviously given and draw the diagram see this is they have to draw how they how they are going to use this you have to draw the diagram and show it to the child here there is a drawing skill which is asked there is a skill examination and a content examination in the same syllabus given there is a comprehension skill there is a decision making skill there is a drawing skill there is a visualization skill so many skills are being asked in the same question paper it is not only an examination for content it is an examination for skill maturity also in the student therefore reading the question correctly will fetch them those top notch marks for the students in the final examination This practice is required for this practice for the teacher how to teach the children and how to allow the children to underline on the content underline on the behavior what the child is going to do and the degree of accuracy now this one the child knows the answer it becomes very simple now when the child is able to comprehend the question it falls under remember and understand question only the question paper is not at all difficult provided the child comprehends the question with three points in mind the behavior what the child is supposed to do next the content and the degree of accuracy wow this is a very easy question which have come across in the whole of the question paper it is a plus b c giving rise to a c plus b now look at the compos composition this is the com a decomposition reaction next one you look at this when the the very ease with which the question is presented here the questions are never made complicated throughout i did not come across any complicated question the child has to comprehend the degree of accuracy correctly identify the types of reactions obviously here when they say types of reaction the child has to understand that the first type is different and the second type is different now when the first this is the first chapter in chemistry when they have the second one as double decomposition obviously there is a clue that the first one comes into a decomposition reaction there will be so many tests conducted balanced chemical equation only will fetch marks for the child isn't this a remembering and understanding question the child is recollecting the example and giving this example now then going to question number 28 now there is a diagram over here that a child has to look at this mild steel cathode titanium anode sodium hydroxide sodium on one side sodium ion moving through ion exchange membrane let the child play with this diagram for a while then comes identify the gases that means there are gases involved there are gases involved now because it is already mentioned to identify the gases involved now look for the gases happening here now what are the gases which come out as anode and the cathode identify the gases involved at the anode anion is a negative ion anode is positive a negative ion is anion 
when we tell this to the children it is so easy for them to understand what gas what negative ions will go on to this it is so easy for the children to understand these gases when brine solution obviously it is so lovely to see that brine solution the only effort what the child is asked for in this whole of the question is about what is brine solution instead of asking what is brine solution it is asked that brine solution is put in uh, sodium hydroxide solution then there is decomposition happening then there are gases coming out Yeah, what's the process? Name the process. The behavior is here. Name the process. Why is it called so? Illustrate the reaction of the process with the help of a chemical reaction. There is a chemical reaction. That means obviously there is a chemical reaction occurring. There is a brine solution. Children know that it is a sodium chloride solution at a very dilute one. Therefore, they will illustrate the reaction in the process. Therefore, this concept is remembering and understanding the question to fix it in various steps. Look at this. Do not go to the question. Understand and bring back the knowledge from the classroom to solve this question. Now, the next question here is: This is a very interesting question. Converging mirror of focal length. Rohan wants to have an erect images. the four children were already taught that all virtual images are erect images real and inverted virtual and erect that means there is a virtual image which is going to happen converging mirror there is a convergence of rays over here what is it converging mirror the child is supposed to know this and there is an evaluation which is happening specify the range of distance where the object can be placed in front of the mirror draw a ray diagram the child is supposed to know only one clue for this that is what is a converging mirror converging mirror is a concave mirror therefore they have a focal length of 40 cm now this becomes an evaluation question let them visualize first here visualization skill is being asked therefore then after that draw a ray diagram when they once are able to visualize obviously there should be a ray diagram showing that mean they have to apply their knowledge over here and they see that the use of they remember and understand not even an application but mirror based on the kind of Im image formation over here there is already there are a few two or three uses which are there in the textbook now again a focal length of 5 cm is being used by debishri in the laboratory as a magnifying glass if we are talking about magnification here because there is a magnifying glass given here least distance of distinction is given here and that means this is where the image is formed this is where the focal length is now what's the magnification v by u is obviously magnification before they will be able to evaluate now then if the child is bringing it close what's the reason for this what is obviously the reason that means the child is not able to read it now what could it be that the child is not able to read whether it is myopia or hypermetropia the child has to write it over here now then Ravi kept a book at a distance of ten centimeters from his eyes of his friend Hari. Hari is not able to read anything written in the book. Give reasons for this. She keeps a book at a distance of ten centimeters. Isn't this the same question? Ten centimeters from the eyes of his friend Hari is not able to read anything. Yes, minimum distance is not being maintained twenty-five centimeters. Now. how can they evaluate it the student fixes a white sheet on a drawing board now let us first emphasize on the way how explanation is being given over here student fixes a white sheet on a paper on a drawing board 
he places a bar magnet in the center and sprinkles some iron filings uniformly around the bar magnet. Now here the child should not get a doubt whether the sprinkling of iron filings is done ununiformly or what. Everything is mentioned very detailedly in competency-based education. Then he taps gently. Let the child visualize this. This is also a visualized visual skill question. Then she visualizes that there is a pattern formed. Even if she doesn't visualize, it is given over here that there is a certain pattern being formed. When a pattern is being formed, why do iron filings arrange in a particular pattern? Yes, obviously, again, go back there to a magnet and to where it is placed on a white paper and the lines of magnetic field, they do not intersect at any point. They do not intersect with each other. These questions can be answered. Which physical quantity is indicated by the pattern of field lines? When they say field lines, when they say field lines, that should obviously be a magnetic field. Which physical quantity is measured? There is nothing which I found it very difficult in the question paper. It is only how we can analyze it. How we can look and spend more time on reading the question and getting more number of correct answers rather than looking for wrong answers and doing it in a hurried way. First stop that. That's the first step. The teacher has to stop the child from writing the answer very immediately. First visualization, thinking, reading the question, trying to underline the important parts of the question. That's very important. Which physical quantity is indicated? See, the, when the word field is written, obviously it is magnetic field. Even if the child misses out here, it will be given, it is given magnetic field over here. Therefore, the child remembers, understands, applies all the knowledge and draws all the, uh, there is a drawing skill and how the child can draw without the intersection of magnetic field. Lines of force, and that's the right answer. <laughs> a compass needle. Now look at this. When there is an odd question here, one won't be on one level and one will not be on another level. Both will be on the same level. Magnitude of a compass needle is placed. A compass needle is placed in near a current carrying wire. That means the current carrying wire will have some effect on the compass needle. State your observations for the following cases and give reason. There are two parts. One is stating the observation and next is giving the reason. Make sure that the child does both the parts. First is stating the observation, what will happen and then why it is happening. Magnitude of electric current in wire is increased. When the magnitude increases, what happens? Compass needle is displaced away from the wire. The strength of the electric current is increased in the first question and the compass needle is away from the wire. Obviously, out of sight is out of mind. At least that the child should be able to understand. The compass needle will not have its effect of the electric field because it is moving away from the wire. Now the next one. Section D. Whether it is a long answer question, whether it is a short answer question, one has to observe that everything has parts in it. Yes, sometimes there are clues given and sometimes there are no clues given. Srishti heated ethanol with a compound A. It is always the girls which are doing these experiments. Looks like there is Kirti, there is Devishri. There is Srishti. In presence of few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid and observed a sweet smelling compound B. There is only one sweet smelling compound given in the whole of the textbook. That is Esther. When the child gets the hang of the sweet smelling compound, then obviously the child can write down the complete answer over here. 
when B is treated, now we all know that acid plus alcohol gives ester plus water, that is esterification reaction. Coming back, they can easily identify A and C. There is no equation asked for the first one, identifying A and C. Now, give one use each of compounds A and B. This is again a remembering and understanding question. When? When does it become a remembering and understanding question? When the child is able to know that it is a sweet smelling compound and that is ester. Write the chemical reactions involved and the name of the reaction and name the reaction. There are two parts again. Write the chemical reaction is one part and naming the reaction is another part. Two parts have to be completed. That's how the marking scheme will become strong right in the school itself for the children to know where they are going wrong and what are the questions which they have left behind. Now, what is the role of concentrated sulfuric acid when it is heated with ethanol at 443 Kelvin? Now, this is given. There is concentrated sulfuric acid reacts acts as a dehydrating agent. Therefore, when concentrated sulfuric acid is added, immediately it should strike that this is a dehydration happening. When it is heated with ethanol, what's the reaction which is involved? The child only has to bring in from the memory what happens when it is concentrated sulfuric acid. Ratio by mistake forgot to label the two test tubes. Ratio by mistake forgot to label the two test tubes containing ethanol and ethanoic acid. Suggest an experiment to identify the substances correctly. Illustrate the reactions with the help of chemical equation. Now, what is happening? It is ethanol and ethanoic acid. Now, how can we discriminate ethanol from ethanoic acid? The children must have started this experiment that ethanoic acid, whatever it is, it gives out effervescence.